Maybe. Yep. We're live. Now, bear with us, folks. All right, if I guess the studio, no. But how do we, uh, I guess you go to my Facebook, my profile, this should be on there. I just share it to your uh, page and then we could just get started if you want. Yeah, that's weird that it wouldn't work on yours though. It's good, that's gotta be a settings thing or something. Something we're not understanding. But I love this music though. This music hits. Share to feed. All right, let me just, I'm gonna tag my, I'm gonna tag my, myself. Stephen Goodwin. All right, there we go, Christian Falk. All right, let me. Audio. Very good. I think we're good. We are. Yeah, we are good. I am. Yep. Yep. I see us. Yep. I see. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Where's my brother? I'm gonna throw my brother on here because my brother. I don't think I'm friends with Alex. Am I friend? Am I friends with your brother? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Possibly. I no, I don't think so, but Joshua when all right, I got my brother. All right, so there we go. So let's save. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. I am looks like i am good it's it's Sweet. on it's on my page let me just make sure that we are good to go i didn't even know there was a little thing on here i don't know what that does all right yeah there we there we go we are we are good to we are good to go yep let me all right perfect so we got we got the stream yard going we are good to go, my friend. Awesome. All right, you want to introduce it? And yes, yes, sir. We're already live, so people are people are already tuning in. They're already excited. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is the first time. So we've got we've got discover your voice, which is the the sort of the media venture that uh, I'm doing, and then we've got uh, exploring with Phil. So this is something that is completely. Uh, new to me so using a completely different platform so we'll see who all joins not quite sure uh what to what to make of this uh so we'll see exactly what happens but so just to give you a little background phil and i have known each other for god i think i was we we were in i don't know if we were in junior high together if that's when we got to know each other but we've known each other ever since onset massachusetts when my dad pastored a church my dad pastored a church called uh, Emmanuel Assembly of God, located in Onset, Massachusetts. Uh, and so Phil and his, Phil started attending that church uh, with his mom, uh, his mom Vicky, and then his brother Alex, and then he has a younger sister uh, Sarah, who got married recently. Uh, and so Phil and I reconnected. Uh, was actually at a funeral, so it's amazing what happens when uh, when death occurs. Uh, so when death occurs, sometimes it can bring people back together. And so Phil and I got connected uh, while I was still living in Massachusetts. And now uh, here we are, however many years later, and we decided we were going to do a, a joint session. So uh, what I'm going to do is some of you uh, on my page know me, but uh, no one really knows. No one really knows Phil. So I'm going to let Phil introduce himself and uh just kind of explain exactly exactly what he does uh and the purpose behind this video yeah absolutely and uh could, if you do me a favor could you tell your producer just to turn down the music just a little bit it'd be uh just a tiny bit awesome see we yeah. were nice and fancy this week but uh first of all i want to thank you for having me on i'm excited to be here um to talk about um a myriad of different things but um it is weird even just like reconnecting and talking with you now or even like getting ready for this because it was a whole um 
I would say hassle, but it was it was an adventure getting to this moment to be able to yeah. record and <laughs> figuring that all out and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like Steven said, we've known each other for a long time. Um, it's it's amazing to me how the years go by. It just goes faster and faster. I don't know what that's about. It just it's crazy to me that we've known each other for like. I don't want to say how long, but it, it's a very long time. If you like think yeah. about it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to say the year, but it was in the nineties, you know, yeah. in the 19 in the nineteen nineties is, you know, you can do the math on that. So, you know, that's a long time. Um, so like he said, his dad uh, became the pastor of our church. Um, we met shortly after that. We became friends after that, um, you know, and then Steven ended up going to college, having his own journey. I, you know, we kind of like went different ways. And then, like he said, we kind of came back together um, in, a, in a funeral. So um, I just want to thank you for having me on. It's going to be an awesome discussion talking about uh, the supernatural and um, the paranormal, the strange and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Definitely a lot of things to get into because I mean, we could take it a myriad of different directions for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know where you want to start. I mean, I don't know if you want to start. I could tell like a... a like a quick, actually, I think it's, I was thinking about this today. And I, if you want, I can share a quick uh, story, like a paranormal thing that happened to me when I was a kid after yeah. leaving, after leaving church um, at that very church. Now, this was before your dad was the pastor at, of our church. And so this yep. is probably, I don't know, a year or two before your dad was the pastor of the, the church. And so it was like, it was a week night. I can't tell you exactly what night it was. Maybe a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or something. It was a prayer meeting night. And back in those days, a lot of churches would have prayer meeting nights, you know, yeah. and, they, you know, I wouldn't say they were extremely well attended, but there was a, a dedicated, you know, 10, 12 people that would always show up uh, for prayer meeting. And that would just be that was the whole service. It was just yeah. a service to people would go up, you know, and, and, and pray. And so this is when early on when we started going to church. And so I was very new to church at this time. You know, I'm, I'm only, I don't know, probably eight years old at this point, nine years old, maybe, you know, very early on uh, going to church. Maybe I think at this point, I've probably given my life to Christ. And, you know, we'd probably been going to church for less than a year, but not quite a year. So yeah. we're going to Bible, uh, not Bible study. It's, it's prayer meeting. And so mom asked me, if I want to go with her to the prayer meeting. And so normally I wouldn't normally go because as a child, you know, let's be honest, you know, you maybe pray for like two minutes, but then after that, you're like, I'm bored. What am, what am you know, what am I doing yeah. here? You know what I mean? You're, you're a kid, you know, yeah. kids, yep. you know, that's how kids are. And so yeah, the prayer meetings, you know, everything's fine. You know, the prayer meeting ends. And so we're leaving and we're outside and across the street from the church, there's this uh, school there. And in front of the school, there's this grass area where there's trees and, you know, just kind of a nice little area where, you know, we have like many church picnic volleyball games and stuff like that. You know, so it's just an area where people would congregate after services and stuff like that. Yep. So my mom and her friend, uh, Marie Smith, um, which is a, a deep cut for Stephen, uh, Marie yeah. Smith was there with uh, my mom and they're talking with each other. You know, I don't, I don't even remember about what you know, about life, whatever, you know, the Lord. And so uh, the car we drove in in was a van. It was one of those vans that, uh, not like a minivan, but it was a van that had like no windows, kind of like a commercial van. Yeah. You know, it was like my dad's work van, basically. Um, so we drove that in. So they're talking, you know, doing their thing. I'm just kind of standing there bored, looking around. And so I look at our car, our van, and in the driver's seat, of the van i see what looks like this like shadowy uh dark kind of like figure but not like a solid figure but always kind of a, a best thing to describe is like a shadow yeah. but it had a face and it had it had its hands on the steering wheel wow. and it was looking over at me you know towards my direction at me laughing at me you know and mm. i could see i could see this and so yeah. of course I, you know, I, I start freaking out. I'm like, you know, mom, there's a, there's, there's someone over in the, in the car and he's like laughing at me, blah, blah, blah. And so of course my mom doesn't see anything at, you know, at all at the time. And so, um, her and Marie, they pray, uh, you know, we pray. And then by the time the prayer ends, you know, in a matter of, I don't know, 
four or five minutes, not even. Uh, the prayer's over. I look back up and there's no one in the in the van anymore. There's no one there. And, um, you know, that, that's pretty much the end of the story right then and there. But that was one of my first, like, really serious, like, paranormal experiences as far as, like, um, I mean, definitely I would consider it a spiritual attack on, on, a, on a, some level, at, at least a, a fear, a fear kind of a thing. Um, yeah. At least that's the way I look at it. I mean, why would you do that to a child? Uh, right. So that that's 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 just evil for sure. Um, but definitely, definitely unnerving for sure. If you're a child and see something like that, for sure. But, yeah, well, but the Lord was there, though. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What most people don't realize too is about Emmanuel. So the church, mm -hmm. and this might attribute to it. There's the church that was actually right next to Emmanuel um, was an actual Satanist church, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, and so this was literally a battle between good and evil, between light and darkness, truth and lies. So it was, I, I, as Phil was talking, I was remembering the church and you just walk by and even at a young age, you know, this is pre Bible college, pre everything, you know, um, wasn't even really grounded in my faith. Um, but you could just feel the, the darkness. You could just feel the, the evil. You could just feel it. You could, you could, it was sort of my first exposure to even, even witchcraft. Um, and I remember doing prayer walks, uh, you know, prayer was a big thing. So I remember doing prayer walks and onset. Uh, and so it was really interesting when I go back and I look at this because, um, just to think about the fact, like most people in today's day, like you don't think of. Uh, a Pentecostal church, a charismatic church being right next door to a Satanist church. Like you just don't think of that. And yet this was exactly where we were. And so uh, whether or not it attributed to it, I don't know, but there's not a doubt in my mind that the two probably aren't in some way connected. Um, just to sort of give an example of, of mine. Uh, so mine wasn't nearly as, as, as I think as intense as yours, but I remember when I was in Bible college, it was my sophomore year of Bible college. Uh, and I was doing, uh, I was doing security. So I would start my security shift at nine uh, and it would be nine to 12. So I would sit in a security booth from nine to 12 and I finished my shift at, at midnight, went back to the room, uh, you know, did my normal stuff to get ready for bed, got in bed. And no sooner had I closed my eyes than all of a sudden I was just completely overwhelmed and gripped with fear. My, I couldn't open my eyes because I was afraid that if I opened my eyes, I was afraid of what I might see. But I felt this tremendous presence. And we know in the Bible, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. So we know mm -hmm. that fear isn't of God because it involves torment. So, uh, but that's exactly how I felt. I felt myself tormented. I felt myself completely unable to move. Uh, and this is what people talk about when they talk about like sleep paralysis and yes, things like yes. that. You know, yep. there was a book. There was a book that was written. I forget who it was written by, but it's called "They Come Out at Night." And there's a lot of people that that suffer from sleep paralysis. And and mo what most people don't realize, sleep paralysis is a very real thing. It's a very spiritual thing. Uh, it has its roots in the demonic. It has its roots in the in the supernatural realm. And so I was just paralyzed with fear. I couldn't move my body, couldn't open my eyes. And the only thing that I could do, I remember this as clear as day. I will never forget it as long as I live. The only thing that I could do was literally just say the name of Jesus. Like I couldn't even audibly say it, right? So most people think you just got to say it out loud. You got to do this. I couldn't audibly say it because I just completely overwhelmed with fear, completely consumed with fear. Uh, and then I remember just whis just whispering in internally at first. And then the more I said it, the more I rehearsed it, the more it was as if this presence just sort of began to it's its stronghold. It just began to. And another thing that I would that I remember as clear as day about this is I was being led to do a Bible study. I'm like, if 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 we're going to talk about spiritual warfare, we've got to know who our enemy is. We've got to know. Uh, and so I was doing a Bible study on Satan uh, and just the names of Satan, how he operates and everything like that. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they were linked. I know that they were connected. You know, 
Phil explain his encounter. Uh, and if I'm not, this was where we held the picnics between the two buildings, right? In that little grassy um, area. No, or, the other, the other side. The other, like, uh, oh, Hammond, the other side. The, got it. So Hammond between School, the parsonage yeah. and the church. Got it. Where yeah. we had the clam boils and everything like that. Yeah. Yep, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. So what what most people don't realize is is this is this uh, connection uh, that exists. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is based on everything like that, I'm gonna just let Phil sort of you know that's how his journey started. But I want him to tell you exactly how that journey has culminated and where it's brought him uh, sort of to where he's at today because. Uh, I want to sort of delve into the the link and the connection, you know, between what Phil does and also the supernatural and the spiritual, you know, with the time that we have together tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, yeah. So, I mean, so much to get into, but just to tie a little knot about Onset. Onset has a crazy, crazy history, like you were kind of alluding to. Now, yeah. Onset was founded by spiritualists. Now, the spiritualist yep. movement was just to give people an idea of like the spiritual warfare going on in onset because there is spiritual warfare. And this is why there's so many hauntings and so many things happening and just crazy things happening because I, I, I've i had that's not just the only thing that's happened to me in onset. There's been other instances. I mean, I've uh, <laughs> I, I hate to drop this because it's like I can't just say this and then not like talk about it. But I mean, I've I've seen possessions in onset. You know, yeah. um, of, of, of actual people I know, you know, so I know that they weren't yeah. faking it and, you know, this, you know, real, real life stuff. So like onset. And so the spiritualist people were people who uh, did a lot of seances and sort of contacting the dead, but maybe yeah. not necessarily in uh, the most savory ways of all times. I mean, just because, you know, you have a whole town of people doing all these seances, you know, even with even if their their intentions are oh we're just going to talk to these people blah 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 there's when you're opening that many doors and you know lord things can come through and things are going to come through whether you want them to come through or not you know whether you're inviting them yeah. or not if you open the door there something can walk through that door you know what i mean yeah. um and it's just a matter of what if they want to or not you know um yeah yeah dude so that's just to give a little bit of history about onset and why that um, maybe like Steve was saying, there's a whole other um, part of onset, and that's kind of like maybe why there's so much stuff going on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my parent, my journey uh, as far as in, in with the Lord, and in you know as far as the paranormal and how it's like kind of shaped my my life, and because uh, I've had all these experiences throughout my life, I've kind of alluded to, I've talked about one of them. I'm not gonna bore you guys with every single one of them but i've had a lot of different experiences where i've either had um you know spiritual attacks in dreams kind of like what steven was saying with the sleep paralysis yeah. that's a, absolutely a real thing and you hit the nail yeah. on the head because every single person that's ever talked to me about sleep paralysis said similar things and these people aren't necessarily christians kind of thing like they may have went into it being like oh this is just a real thing but then as time goes on and they're like kind of tortured by this entity or whatever this thing is yeah. um it's quite clearly more than just a medical thing you know yeah. so much so that one guy was telling me uh, oscar is it's a friend of mine um he's in his, like he's, he has his own podcast talks about the paranormal he's had this kind of experience just like you he with with him it was one of those things where the moment he would like take like there was a moment where he's like sitting on his couch like looking at his phone all of a sudden he takes his eyes off his phone and he's like he just as soon as he knew that in that moment he took his eyes off his phone he knew that it was coming he could like feel it like that like a uh, sleep paralysis thing and then he couldn't move and yeah. then right before that this is where it gets creepy he sees uh what looks like his girlfriend walk by right and so then he's like oh that's kind of weird he goes to check on her she's not even in that room she's like in a completely different room so he saw something walk by that looked like his girlfriend it was or pretending to be his girlfriend or something yeah um, so that's you know <laughs> And then yep. to have that happen right after it, you know, like all these things are connected as far as the sleep paralysis too. I wanted to bring that up too. Um, yeah, so my, my journey has just been wild, um, you know, just experiencing a lot of different things. Um, and not only that, my my uncle uh, and my family had a, a story um, about a, a bunch of strange things that happened to them in a house in Onset, you know, where 
um, a bunch of, you know, poltergeist type activity, like things moving around the house. And um, it, it all culminated to, I mean, dude, there's, it's just weird. Maybe it's just like, it's going to turn into like a paranormal onset, but like, yeah, uh, onset's just wild, dude. So yeah. like in this house, one of the, one of the, one of the things that happened, this is going to, this is going to be interesting because I think it could segue into something that could be an explanation that's maybe not necessarily demonic, but could be a valid explanation of why some some paranormal things are happening, as far as like an explanation of why certain things happen. So this is weird. So one of the stories from this house is when they were living there at the end of the summer, as you know, um, in Ansa, it's a summer type place. So a lot of people come from the summer, then they leave. And then the winter, it's a lot quieter in this in the town, generally speaking. So yeah. it's, it was even more so like that back in the 70s, 60s and stuff. So this is late 70s early 80s this is my uncle michael this is my mom auntie yep. dot my auntie dotty they're living in this apartment this is before my mom and dad are even married so they're dating at the time so they, they're they're they live in this house um all these crazy things are happening up to this point so end of summer all of a sudden they hear a baby crying and they're mm. like that's kind of this is this is kind of weird like where's that baby coming from so they're looking around they're looking outside they they're like it's coming from this house but this house is empty yeah. You know, and so they're like, oh, my God, someone abandoned their child here. We got to call the cops. So they call the cops. The cops show up. They go through the house. No baby. No one inside the home. No one around. So I'm telling the story to my aunt, who's on the other side of the family. And she lived in that neighborhood maybe 15 years before this event. They heard the same thing. They heard a baby crying inside of a home that was empty, which is weird, right? And so fast forward to 2011, my cousin JP was dating a girl down the street from this home. She heard the same thing. So it's like, it makes you wonder like, what's going on there? You know what I mean? It's a very strange thing. Yeah. So I, I always look at like technology and uh, you know, with our phones, right? In our phones, there's minerals that come from the earth, flash memory and all these things that are in the earth that we are able to use to record things on and all that kind of stuff. So I think there is a possibility that sometimes some of these things, kind of like this baby thing, like maybe not necessarily it's a demon or anything like that. Maybe that there's something that happened in the past and it's just like replaying over and over or somehow, some way, just like a, a phone video clip, it'll it'll be a little like replay. And there's no one actually there. There's nothing there. It's just like a a a, 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 me a past the memory past memory or something like that and they've sort of proven this with um as far as like spoken word and stuff they were they were doing like tests with rocks and other things that like could it be possible that um like voices and you know events or whatever could be you know imprinted on natural minerals that are in the earth yeah um, so like that could be a possibility as far as like things Maybe like things like that or things like where people say they go to Gettysburg and they're like, I heard I heard a cannon fire or I heard, you know, this, that and the other thing. And you know what I mean? It's like that kind of stuff could be a possibility, too. Um, yeah. And I just like to bring that up because it's more of like a rational explanation for some things um, as yeah. far as like uh, sounds, as far as, uh, you know, awful things happening in a particular area. And it's kind of like a replay of that event. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. So the I think the, the biggest reason why I wanted to do this video, uh, and so it's interesting because I mean the church that I'm a part of uh, is big into uh, the ministry of deliverance. Uh, so uh, it, it's heavily involved with deliverances. I've I've seen deliverances take place at the altar. Um, you know, so I've seen I've seen people vomit. I've seen people. You know, I've seen kind of people like writhe. I've you know I've seen so much just being at the church that I go to. And it's interesting because I'm, I believe it was last year, uh, a movie came out called Come Out in Jesus Name. Uh, and it was purely all about this. It was purely all about the demonic. It was about deliverance. Uh, and so it's where I kind of really, you know, started, it sort of wedding, it started wetting my appetite for the supernatural, for the spiritual. Uh, and then once again, I started reading books on spiritual warfare, started reading a lot of Derek Prince, who deals a lot with spiritual warfare. Um, and so I've always been curious on the connection that exists between what Phil does. And now uh, Phil hasn't even delved into what he actually does. So he's got an Instagram channel, uh, that he, that he calls, it's called exploring with Phil. 
Uh, and so on it, you can find a lot of his videos and, and what he actually does. He's heavily in, in Massachusetts. Uh, so <clears throat> the reason why I've kind of wanted to do this video is because I want to sort of try and wrestle with the, the link between what Phil sort of experiences in what people would call the paranormal, right? A lot of people I think are freaked out about that. A lot of people are, are sort of spooked by it. Um, and the only example that I really know of in Bible, in the Bible with it is when Saul, king of Israel, you know, consulted the witch of Endor. Um, and at this point they were killing the witches. It was, you know, Saul was putting to death all the witches in the land. And yet when, when he showed up, he showed up disguised and the witch didn't really know who it was. And the witch didn't really know who it was until, until, uh, she actually saw who it was that Saul was wanted to bring up and she saw Samuel and she realized that it was it was Saul that was in front of her. So this is my only real understanding of this uh, as it pertains to the supernatural. And so, you know, what I want to do is I don't know, Phil, what you've heard, because in your in all of your research and all of your investigation, because I think that's pretty much what they would call you an investigator. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if, you would, if you would consider or classify yourself as some, something different, but I've watched some of the videos and it's definitely sort of an investigator. You know, you go you go out and you listen for the sounds, you listen for the messages, you listen for all these different things. And, you know, the other thing, too, is what people talk about. You know, I remember shows. Um, I don't know if it was called something from the other side where it was basically this person who was, you know, he would speak to loved ones. Right. He would speak to loved ones. He would tell the loved ones what they would say and all of these different things. And it would usually bring the people to tears and every. So my understanding of all of this has been, OK, are, are is the paranormal real? And I almost feel like the two may be sort of connected, if not one in the same paranormal than this, the supernatural realm, because what I've heard is that what's portrayed as let's say you know deceased loved ones what's portrayed as all of this and what most people don't understand too is is phil and i have both experienced death phil and i both share the same the same uh testimony in that we both lost our fathers so i remember uh very vividly when when phil's dad wally uh died you know and so when i remember when my dad passed away from COVID. uh so i think it was short it was around the same time if i'm not mistaken uh, mm -hmm. Shortly after my dad died, I remember, you know, seeing that that Wally had, had died. Uh, and so, you know, it, I, I try and picture this, you know, if somebody wanted to come to Phil and I and started, you know, say, oh, we could bring your dads back. You know, we could, you know, what that what that would look like. So just want to go on the record. No, I'm not looking to bring my dad back. No, I'm yeah. not. Looking, <laughs> uh, so my dad, my dad is cremated. And so my brother and I have have half of my dad. So. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't see that happening. But what I want to sort of understand and just based on on your experiences, like, you know, have you seen the have you seen the correlation? Have people approached the subject of what you do and its connection to sort of the supernatural and the spiritual realm? Um, just because I feel like what you're doing is you're doing sort of on the like the paranormal side. Um, where you go out and, you know, you look for Casper, the friendly ghost, and, you know, it's everything like that. Um, and for me, I see it in the church that I go to and stuff like that. I see it from the side of deliverance. So I think we would all agree that there's definitely unseen forces. And not to get super out off the deep end, you know, this is Tucker Carlson. I was talking to my pastor about this uh, Tuesday night after class. Uh, and Tucker Carlson went on Joe Rogan out of all places to go. He go on Joe Rogan. Now, if you go on Joe Rogan, you either go with a, a specific message to be heard because he's got a massive audience. So if you go on Joe Rogan, then you're going to like, you're not going to hold any punches. Uh, and so this even can tie into the whole, you know, alien UFO phenomenon. And I've heard people even talk about that, that it's what we see and understand about that is is people will look at it as extraterrestrial so right phil delves into the paranormal we've also got the extraterrestrial but at the end of the day the biggest question that i have is are both is both the extraterrestrial and the paranormal are they two sides of the same coin and have the same source and that's the demonic that's the that's the forces of darkness right when bible makes it very clear we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So we have to understand this. 
You know, we know demonic possession is real. We know that that's real. But Phil is experiencing something that is a, a lot different um, where I'm sure the stories that you can share about stuff that you've heard, um, stuff that you've maybe seen. So I would like to just, you know, I would like to just sort of get your take on, you know, what are people saying about this and sort of its connection to the supernatural? Oh, because Tucker Carlson, this is where I was going. Tucker Carlson went on Joe Rogan and uh, he admitted to what we are, what we see and understand as this uh, extraterrestrial uh, is supernatural in nature. And so it's not at all what we're being told. It's not at all what we're being led to believe. It's it's a delusion. Uh, it's a deception. And so he went on and, and said that, you know, what people think of as as paranormal, uh, not paranormal, uh, UFOs, aliens is basically just supernatural in nature. So I can't help but see the same thing with you, Phil. So I'm just going to ask mm -hmm. you, you know, sort of your, what your experiences uh, have been. Um, so my take on the paranormal, I think it, you're right. It is all connected. I think it definitely is connected. I think I'm definitely in the camp of people who think there's a possibility. I'm willing to believe there's a possibility at the very least that aliens are either fallen angels or yes. working with fallen angels or fallen angels who are pretending to be something else. Uh, I've, I've felt that way for the past few years and yeah. what really really hit it home for me that that is definitely what's happening here and uh is there was this um guy i can't i'm gonna butcher his name because i can't remember his name i think his, his name is chris i can't remember his last name but he was a big ufo ufo guy i'm gonna tell this story like really short but he he tells like this hour and a half story about how he's really into ufos he's starting to do research then he's out in the field he's looking he's seeing ufos and then all of a sudden, there's this voice in his head that tells him, hey, why don't you show up over here? You'll see a UFO. He goes to that spot. He sees a UFO. Fast forward. A few months later, it gets more intense, more intense, more intense. You know, um, then he starts getting messages, uh, all leading to a point where, like, a few years go by, and then it leads to a point where he doesn't even want to be in contact with these things anymore. And so much so that he has this event that happens in his home. And this is not a Christian guy, right? This is a guy that's just an alien guy. He has yeah. a thing in he has an event in his home where he he it sounds like something with nails like walking on his floor like hardwood floor around his home and it was telling him to go out there and see what it was um so i do think that uh the aliens are uh definitely not from another planet well i guess if you consider heaven another planet then maybe <laughs> but yeah. I, I think they are i think they are fallen angels for sure, um, and they're trying to deceive people, and not only that, but I think, I mean, would you be surprised, I mean, this is going out there, but if all of a sudden this UFO comes down, and then this person comes out, and they're like, I'm the Messiah, I'm the one you've been looking for, you know, we're the alien, yeah. you know, like, I mean, yeah. a lot of people would be deceived, you know, right. I mean, like, that sounds, like, it sounds crazy on one hand, but on the other, on the side of the coin, you're like, does it sound crazy? Because that, like, that could be possible. And I do, I do think there is a, a also not only fallen angel connection. There could be. I don't know how you feel about this, or if you've done any research on this. Or um, there's a, a lot of people out there. Um, it's more of a recent thing that's kind of gotten um, traction in the past few years, as far as in the Christian circles. And that's Nephilim. Yep. Now yep. the Nephilim, for those people who don't know, uh, the Nephilim were. Uh, basically uh, the offspring of fallen angels and women who created these like superhuman godlike people essentially um, yeah. and they were uh, they, the Bible describes them as uh, men of renown yeah. and kings or something like that so they, they were mighty men or like not mighty men yes. not David's mighty men but mighty men yeah. and you know just had amazing powers I mean you can imagine they're half angels so um, there's a theory that because a lot of people think that the flood is partially not only because of the sins of the earth but also yeah. the nephilim connection and yeah. uh humanity being perverted by the angels and not only that possibly other yeah. creations being perverted by uh yeah. angels as well which could explain a lot of other cryptid type animals as well you know your your half half human half goat things or your your right. sasquatch even possibly you right know, bigfoot Bigfoot could be a half Nephilim, half ape type 
creature. And if it, because some people say, oh, they, it just like disappeared out of nowhere, or there's been multiple reports of many different cryptids that um, disappear and have all these like powers and do all these things. And it's like, it's not out of the realm of possibility that these, this could be I have a Nephilim connection uh, because yeah. Nephilim existed before the flood and yep. then the flood, the flood happens. And then they also yep. exist after yep. because Goliath and all those yep. other, um, yep. I don't want to get the names wrong. They're hard names to say, but all, there's a, you can look them up. There's a bunch of different tribes and peoples yep. that um, are a part of this bloodline. Um, yeah. So it's not a real possibility that they could be um, the aliens as well, is where I was kind of going with that. Or, or, or some of the aliens, like some of them, some of the aliens are described as like, there's different kinds, like the Nordics, there's this, there's that, like all of these yeah. things could be uh, possible Nephilim related as well. And that's a whole other um, subject, but something that's as far as if you're a Christian looking at the paranormal, because a lot of Christians look at the paranormal and they'll either scoff at it. Or be like everything's demonic or just not even want to talk about it or be afraid of it you yeah. know and the, being afraid of it is the last thing you should be afraid of because the lord gives you you know power over all of these things you don't have to be afraid of any of these things um, yeah you know what i mean you shouldn't taunt them but i'm just saying like you know the lord is stronger than all of these things so yeah you know um so that's kind of like where my head is at with all of that stuff um and then you get into the thing with uh like ghosts and familiar spirits and a lot of what's really strange about the familiar spirits because i'm not sure what these familiar spirits are i'm not sure if familiar spirits are these nephilim that are kind of like disembodied people that yeah. are now these spirits that are wor either working for the satan or are not a part of God god's redemption arc because they're half angel like, I don't know how that's working. I don't, I, yeah. I'm just speculating. I don't know. Um, yeah. So there's that aspect. And not only that, there's, if you look at the King James and then the Geneva one before that, um, at like familiar spirits and stuff, there seems to be a difference between a human spirit and a familiar spirit. So I'm not sure what, and uh, there's a lot of weird things in there um, as far as the Old Testament goes, because then there's this whole other angle where uh, they're talking about familiar spirits and they're talking about, like a bottle and it's like a bottle that you drink right and it, yep. you drink this bottle and it you the spirit or whatever entity or whatever will come over you and you speak this entity will speak through you or something like that yeah and what's weird about that is what did they call alcohol right like hard, hard alcohol is spirits yeah and i yep. never made that connection until i yep. was i saw the bottle thing in yep. there and like a reference yep. to that and i'm like wait a minute Dude, they call alcohol like certain alcohol spirits. Yep. And what what happens if you drink that whole bottle? Yeah. Your personality changes. Yeah. You do things you wouldn't normally do. Sometimes yep. you say things you. I'm not saying an, an entity is taking you over. I'm just saying it is kind of strange that they call out hard alcohol some of hard alcohol spirits, and then they have this familiar spirits angle in the Bible where it talks about people drinking something, and then something yeah. speaking through them. Um, yeah. So just something I. I thought of that was kind of made me it piqued my interest because I'm like that's kind of interesting um, yeah so I know I'm kind of rambling about a bunch of different things but these are kind of the things I've been like kind of thinking about lately because um, I you know as you like I because in the Bible it says to work out your faith with fear and trembling so I always try to do that so yeah. you know I, I always look at this stuff and I'm like you know what like what's really going on here you know what I mean and yeah. th 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 there's so many things in the Bible like here's another thing i wanted to talk about um when jesus dies on the cross and then he goes down into hell there's a couple references in the bible about like kind of what he does down there now yeah. peter mentioned something about him preaching to the dead yeah um in first peter 3 or something 319 i believe or something like that he mentions jesus or not even jesus necessarily he just mentions uh, was the, wasn't the gospel not only for the living, but for the dead. And so there's a mention there of like uh, the gospel being preached to the dead. And then I looked up that reference and there's also a reference that Greek people were possibly preaching to the dead as well. But then it's also, there was also a part saying that, oh, that's referring to Jesus going down into hell. You know, because the early church thought that when Jesus goes went down into hell, he possibly either freed the the good people out of good shield and you know like i don't know it's kind of it's very complex because there's not like a lot of yeah. detail 
on that. So it's kind of a lot of speculation. But to me, like, if Jesus went down there to preach, I wouldn't think he'd be preaching to Adam and Eve. I mean, I think they'd be already a part of the, you know, I imagine he'd be preaching to the other people too. I don't know. At least that's yeah. what I would imagine Jesus to do, but I don't know. Um, so yeah. that's kind of one of those things we don't really know what's going on down there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but it's, it's it, that, that part of the Bible has always interests me. Um, like what Jesus does after he go when he goes down into hell. Um, so, I mean, I know it's called the harrowing of hell. So that, that I do know, I know there's been paintings about it. You can Google it, the harrowing of hell when he goes down. Uh, and this is what Paul talks about in Ephesians when he said he led captivity captive. Um, and so definitely, definitely understand that. Uh, definitely no, but this is exactly what happens with Jesus, right? Remember in the book of Revelation, he says, uh, you know, I am he who was dead, but now I'm alive. And he said that he holds the keys of death and death. hell. So he has the keys. You know, Paul says, you know, oh, death, oh, oh death, where is your string? Brave, where is your victory? Um, you know, so even even the author of Hebrews says that it was for this reason that Christ was manifested, that he would destroy him who had the power over death namely the devil it was it was the apostle john who spoke about christ coming to actually destroy the works of darkness so here's one thing that i've always believed right and i did a whole video on this uh most people when we think about the cross right we think about you know jesus was on the cross for six hours max lucato did a book called six hours one friday so jesus was on the cross for six hours now three of those hours the bible talks about a gross darkness it says a darkness, almost like what you could experience or what you could expect when you read the book of Exodus, where like you could, man couldn't even see his hand in front of his face because of the darkness. We oftentimes associate that. We think of maybe a solar eclipse. We think mm -hmm. about, um, you know, just whatever. I mean, we recently just came out of a solar eclipse that took the world by storm or not the world, but the United States and people just lost their minds with the recent eclipse. But the dark, I've always believed that the darkness that we find uh, there, you know, it, it's funny because it's during that time when Jesus cries, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I think you can catch a glimpse of what happens there at the cross because I'm convinced, right? Jesus is surrounded by natural enemies. He's surrounded by people that are mocking him. He's surrounded by people that are scoffing. If you are the son of God, come down. What did, what did the devil say to Jesus in the wilderness? If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And now you're hearing those same words while Jesus is on the cross. Now, what I've often believed in, what I would propose to anyone watching this video is what if the darkness wasn't a physical darkness that we understand it, but what if literally all of hell descended on the cross? What if it was every, the Bible speaks about principalities and spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness. What if all of the forces of hell were gathered there at the cross to, to they basically, they were throwing a party. They were rejoicing because Jesus was there on the cross. So here's how I envision it. They're all gloating they're all jeering there you can see sort of their ridicule and their mocking through the you know the scribes and the priests and the peace of the people that are walking by but what if that darkness was literally all of hell surrounding jesus jeering at him mocking him that you know scorning him you could find this language even in psalm chapter 22 that's a messianic psalm uh and so you know imagine i would imagine this imagine all of hell rejoicing that Christ is hanging there on the cross. Here we are. We think we've got Christ. We've got Christ exactly where we want him. He's nailed to a cross. We've killed the son of God, effectively killing God. They probably knew Emmanuel, God with us. So if we kill the son, you know, we kill. It's almost like that parable. You know, this is the son. This is the heir. Let's kill the son. And so they killed the son. But I would love it, right? They're throwing a party. They rejoice over Christ dying on the cross right christ's body is christ's body is taken off the cross and i love it because they like a lot of times they could have just disregarded i'm sure what they with roman crucifixion they could have just disregarded the bodies right they could have disregarded they could have put it in a pit they could have put it wherever and yet what we find is they took his body and they put it in a borrowed tomb and it's almost like they were preserved his body and that's not almost exactly what was happening his body was preserved 
His body was concealed, right? Because unless a, a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. So we find that the, the body of Jesus is there. Now his body is, is concealed in a tomb behind a stone. And yet what would happen if they all of hell rejoiced over Christ at the cross? And yet the minute he said, it is finished, the minute they saw him breathe his last, all of a sudden he goes down and he shows up on their territory. He shows up in their camp. It's funny, my pastor last night in church uh, started singing a song, I went to the enemy's camp. And if you remember Onset, I'm sure we sang that song. Oh right? yeah, I oh yeah. Camp and I took back what oh. he stole from me. But yeah. here's another thing that I find interesting that, that I think could support that, right? So in the Old Testament, in, in 1 Samuel, we find that the children of Israel were engaged surprisingly against the same enemy that they're engaged with now. And the, the, the war that we see right now between Israel and Hamas is uh, the war that predates, right? It predates the Holocaust. It goes all the way back to the book of Judges, goes all the way back. Uh, and so what we find is we find that they were defeated and they bring the Ark of the Covenant uh, into battle, thinking that if they have the Ark of the Covenant, it would be the magic elixir, it would be the magical formula that would get them to where they would have victory over their enemies. What happens? They were defeated. Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of the priest, were killed. The high priest uh, dies as well. And the Ark of the, uh, the Ark of God was captured by the enemy, right? So what the children of Israel couldn't do, we think that the Ark being lost was just, you know, we, we look at it as uh, the battle's lost, it's all over, we've lost the Ark. But yet if you read the Ark, they brought the Ark and they put it in the temple of their God and their God was Dagon. So it was half fish, half man, that was their God. And the first time they set up the ark in front of Dagon, we find that he just simply fell fell forward before the ark, fell fell on his face before the ark, right? They, they put Dagon back in his place, and then they come back again the next morning, and he, the same thing. But now, all of a sudden, his, his, he's dismembered, right? He's missing hands, he's missing his head, he's missing all of these different things. And so what ends up happening here, right? What ends up happening here is... The ark begins to inflict, God begins to inflict tumors upon people. The ark was literally brought into three of the five cities in what was then known as Philistia, which is one of the cities is actually what we know as Gaza today. Gaza is a biblical city. Gaza is, is, is a biblical place that you will find. The Gaza Strip is located, but you find these tumors. And so what I find incredibly interesting is what the children of Israel couldn't do in battle it's almost like god went behind the scenes through right the ark was the representation of the presence of god god goes behind the scenes right goes behind the scenes and he starts wreaking havoc in the enemy's camp he goes where saul king of israel couldn't go he goes where jonathan couldn't go he goes where the children of israel and he actually goes in the enemy's territory and he wreaks havoc so much to the point where they're like, we need to get rid of the ark. We need to we need to get this thing out of here, lest we perish. And so, <laughs> if 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 God was willing to go behind enemy lines during there, then to Phil's point, like, and this is what the Bible preaches. It's almost like Jesus went behind enemy lines. And what does the Bible say? That the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. If Jesus says the gates of hell will not prevail then guess what? It means there are actually gates of hell. And I did I, I did a video and Phil's done a lot of videos, but I've done a I did a video called taking taking the fight to the gates. And I, I, I did this, you know, really cool picture, at least in my estimation of it. Uh, and so Christ taking the battle. Now, here's what's amazing about that. And, and, and I'll let Phil talk about this, too, is because that's what we're called to do as Christians. Right. Phil mentioned that God has not given us a, a spirit of fear he mentioned that we're not supposed to be afraid of all of these different things and what did jesus command us to do right i, I love i love the pastor of the church that i go to because he 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 attacks cessationists head on like he goes after cessationists and he goes after people that believe the gifts of the holy spirit and were for the apostles only and everything mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and so we've been called we've been given authority over unclean spirits we've been given authority over demons we've been given authority over it and so if jesus took the battle to the gates of hell if jesus went to hell and literally took hold of the keys like revelation says he has 
the keys, which means he can unlock, he can bind, he can lose, he can do whatever he wants. And so now what did he tell us right before he ascended? All, and he already had the keys at this point. He didn't get the keys mm -hmm. when he was in heaven. He yeah, got, he ascended right. two things Jesus ascended with, right? He ascended with scars. If you don't believe that he didn't ascend with scars, look at what he told Thomas. Put your yep. hand in the print where the spear was. Put your, your finger in the print of the nail. So Jesus ascended with scars and he ascended with keys. Two things that he ascended with. And this is important for us to recognize because now Jesus said, all authority under heaven and earth is given unto me. But then he sends us out. It's what we find in Mark too. So like this concept, and I love what Phil does because Phil sort of brings it. He doesn't approach it from the standpoint of casting out demons, casting out unclean spirits. But what Phil does is he sort of highlights, and I love it because he highlights this very real phenomenon you know, that exists, you know, a lot of pe some people are crazed with with extraterrestrial and UFOs and aliens and Project Bluebeam and all of these different things, you know, Roswell, New Mexico, all of these different things. Now, Phil, I have to say, I've thought about that concept of the Antichrist showing up in a UFO and coming out and saying, I'm the Messiah. Like, I've thought about that. You know, I mean, we could delve into, we could even delve into AI and whether or not mm. the Antichrist could be, you know, could be AI, right. you know, the, the, you know, they gave the power to the, to the, the image of the beast to speak. Is it a possibly a reference to AI? So uh, I mean, we could go down a whole separate rabbit hole with that, which we're not going to do. Uh, but it's interesting because I've often wondered what would happen if in the midst of all this, and it, 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 it blew up last year blew up where they were this and i love it every time they talk about it, whistleblower whistleblower like whistleblower like there was a whistleblower about 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 the i don't want i gotta be careful what i say about the other whistleblower I don't want that. <laughs> so, yeah so if, if if you're at all if you're at all aware of the events of 2020 and all our you know all of you know what whistleblower what a whistleblowers i'm talking about but last year there was a whistleblower about all this stuff that what has not been disclosed to us and you know what though paul speaks about an end time delusion right he speaks about a mass delusion and a great falling away and so i believe that what what phil is doing is he's kind of shining a light on this paranormal and other people are shining light on the extraterrestrial but at the end of the day at the very heart of it all is one very important theme and it's what jesus said he says take heed that you do not be deceived and I believe that a lot of people will take what Phil does with with, you know, the paranormal and they will be deceived by it. You know, Phil mentioned opening doors. And so, you know, I would I mean, goes down to Ouija boards and all of these different mm -hmm. things, seances and sage and all of these different things. Like, I don't I, I, I mean, I don't think it's any coincidence that Phil had his experience at the church that we both attended and the church was literally had a satanist church right next to it like i don't think it's any coincidence and so people don't realize that the doors that they open up and so the biggest thing that i want people to understand just from this video just from this conversation of whether it's and it makes no difference like i'm not trying to go off the deep end and talk about aliens and ufos and elon musk summoning the demon you know, with AI, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go off that, off that, that, that deep end. Um, but what I do want us to understand is that deception is going to be very real in the last days, and the enemy is going to do whatever he can to deceive us. And there are a lot of people that are gonna buy this stuff hook, line, and sinker. And so, what I love about Phil doing it is from the point of a, a Christian perspective, right? Do you know what the name of that show was? Um, it was all about paranormal, unsolved mysteries. Was unsolved mysteries? Oh, yeah, unsolved mysteries. Yeah, I, but I don't think Rob, it was with Robert mysteries. with Robert Stack. I think so. Yeah, like all I remember is this deep voice. Oh, excellent. Yeah, unsolved yeah, mysteries. yeah, yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's all I remember. Yep. But yeah. like all of yep. these different things and all these different stories that you would see in like Reader's Digest. And I don't even think mm -hmm. Reader's Digest is around anymore. Yeah, um, I, I got the reference. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know it's like. So I love what you do because like, I, and I wonder, are people asking questions? Like what are people, what what's people's perception of this? Like just of the, of the paranormal, you know, do people are, do you find people that are, that are, that are maybe more, 
more afraid of it that are more that are more curious about it like what's been your because you have a whole page dedicated to it mm -hmm. so what's been people's understanding of it um i think i think most people are either it's it's weird if people are either like curious about it or they don't think it's really strange or they don't think it's real at all and so they yeah. you know will either make fun of you or say you know this isn't real or whatever so you get yeah. you get that you get you're always going to get that crowd so you get that crowd you get the people that are curious you get the people that are like true believers or like people that believe in like the paranormal or things that happening or you know that kind of thing so and then you have people that are a little bit more skeptical so it's like uh, all across the board um i think uh, over the past year i've really tried to um highlight this the spiritual warfare that happens sometimes not all the times in my videos but a, a few occasions there's been a few videos where i've done where I, you know where it was definitely uh spiritual yeah. warfare spiritual attack and um you know and i say that in the video we talk about it and then you know when the video came out we talked about um you know what happened that night so like i've definitely made people more aware of things like this happening you know because yeah. without without me talking about it because i'll be honest i'm not a lot of people talk about this kind of stuff as right. far as like real spiritual warfare like going into a, some some location like you said where you went back to your room and then all of a sudden it felt like darkness and evil was around you and like oppressing yeah. you and like those that can be a real thing for many people and I think many, a lot of people either just don't understand what it is or just think it's in their head or like, but my goal in the last year is to try to show people that yes, evil does exist out there. Yes, and but not only that, but also good exists. God exists, evil exists. You know, one of my recent videos I did, I went to a location that has a lot of, um, Freetown State Forest, has a lot of evil um, past. A lot of murders have happened there. A lot of yeah. just negative things have happened there. So it seems to me, in my eyes, to be a spot where evil is or evil likes to be or evil things have been drawn there because of the evil things that have happened there. I don't know yeah. what the connection is, but so obviously something evil is there or wanting to be there. And what really hammers at home is when I go there, because when you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside you. The Lord lives inside yeah. you. And when evil things are around you, they see that and they know that. And they cannot help themselves. Believe me, they cannot help themselves. They will make it known. You know, and that that whole video, there's a whole chunk of it where they're talking about God. They're talking about the ministry. They're talking about, you know, all these different things and all, you know, relating to like a spiritual warfare between them and God. You know, basically yeah. a battle, you know, essentially it was, you know. And that, that tells me that, <laughs> you know, evil is there. You know what I mean? And like I said, it, it will... It cannot help itself but to reveal itself when God is there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like when stuff like that happens, I always I, I make that the name of the video. You know, good versus evil, and yeah. I make sure to really pinpoint that yeah. and to be like, hey, you know, because the way I look at it, if if one person, you know, comes to Christ because of this video, or even opens their eyes to the possibility that the Lord exists, because if you're willing to believe that the paranormal exists then I'm sorry, but you're probably going to be more willing to believe that God exists too. You know what I mean? Especially if you're a person that's never gone to church or something like this could be an entryway into you learning who Jesus is, because if you're willing to believe in, you know, uh, supernatural things on one aspect, then, you know, it's, there might be willing to believe in Jesus. Maybe they just haven't heard, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, that's, that's something that I've in the last year been trying to like, uh, not like overly focus on, uh, but focus on in my videos. I do a prayer requesting in the beginning of my video now for the past few months, being like, if you want some me to pray for you, message me. I will pray for you. Whatever you you know, if yeah. you need help, whatever. And I will yeah. say, one person has reached out to me in the past like six months, and yeah. um, at least has told me that they've come to Christ. So I think that is an awesome thing. And so I'm happy that the Lord even used me in a way to help this person come to Christ you know what I mean so like yeah. if nothing else like that is more than enough for me and uh, you know uh, so I think there is I think there's an avenue in the paranormal for uh someone like me to show people that there's more than meets the eye is what's going on here you know what I mean yeah uh, because it really is it's do it's dominated by you know witchcraft it's dominated by 
you know, um, things that are portrayed as good and as evil. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot yep. of things in the paranormal community that um, are portrayed as good and it's not, you know, so like, there's yeah. not a lot of opposition there. And I'm, I'm kind of like the only, uh, I mean, there might be some others, but you know what I'm saying? It, it's kind of a, um, it's an interesting subject for sure. Yeah, I think, one, so one thing that you touched on that I just want to highlight um, is, so if you're at all, if you watch this video live, or you watch it back afterwards, if you're at all familiar with, with the Celtic, so Celtics were out of Scotland, um, Ireland, you know, you've heard the St. Patrick and all of these different things, but one of the, one of the phrases that they would use in, in Celtic and is they call it a thin place. And what a thin place was, was it was a place that had been so consecrated, so sanctified by prayer and holiness that it was almost like heaven and earth came together. It was a thin place. There wasn't this sort of distance or chasm that people understand when they're like, heaven is brass. It doesn't seem like God is around. It doesn't seem like God's listening to me. Where is God? There were these thin places where it seemed like miracles happened on the regular, It where it, you could just feel God's presence. And Rachel, I believe it, no, Rebecca Freelander, you can find this on Pure Flicks. You can find this, I believe, on Amazon. But she talks about thin places. And it's these places that exist where the atmosphere between heaven and earth seem to be so charged that it's like you can just feel the presence and the glory of God. Why do I even talk about thin places? Because Phil mentioned something. He mentioned about stuff that had happened there, murder, witchcraft, and all of those different things. And now as a result of that, because of what happened in the past, now all of a sudden you've got this activity that takes place in the present. And I, the Bible actually gives a, a, a phrase and a word to that. We oftentimes understand it in our minds, but what the Bible actually calls that is a stronghold, right? The Bible calls it a stronghold. And so we've got to be very careful with what we allow in our lives because I, uh, in one of the videos I did, I said what, we, what you tolerate will eventually dominate. And if I, the reference was in, was in regards to Jezebel in the book of Revelation, you tolerate that woman Jezebel. But what you tolerate in your life, regardless of whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's pornography, whatever it may be, whatever you tolerate in your life will dominate you and will eventually become a stronghold. And so what I love about what Phil is saying and what he does is because he's seeing this, you know, sort of firsthand. And it's in a different light though, right? Because I'm used to seeing it in church, people vomiting, people, you know, some people even writhing and stuff like that. Um, and so like, but what, and, and we believe strongholds, people that have to be delivered, the strongholds that have to be broken, strongholds in their mind, but there can actually be geographical strongholds, right? Remember what about the book of Daniel, Daniel prayed and said, from the moment you prayed, I already sent the answer, but I was withstood for 21 days. Why? Because of the of the Prince of Persia. I was, was there was that stronghold. There was that that war between good and evil. And so what Phil is actually doing is I would say to some degree, you're going into places where there are spiritual strongholds. What you're seeing is a, a manifestation of the spirit of the strongholds that are in existence, whether because of the witchcraft that was done you know, seances, Ouija boards. I mean, we could go into the whole Bohemian Grove out in California. And if, if those of you who watch this video don't know about the Bohemian Grove, I want to be very careful with the terminology that I use because I don't want to use terminology that I consider buzzwords on the internet. But if you look at the Bohemian Grove and sacrifice and the shedding of blood and all of this stuff, you know, the Bible talks about life is in the blood and the blood is to be that's why that's why the bible says do not eat anything with the blood in it that was in the book of leviticus and so what what we find is just this not only just this this dichotomy between good and evil but we find the contrast between spiritual thin places and strongholds and so what we what i want what phil has made very clear is with what he does is be very careful what you open yourself up to be very careful what you allow access be very it's like i don't know if anybody saw that movie i don't know phil if you saw the movie nefarious but nefarious mm -hmm. uh it came out last year it's actually with uh uh sean uh, 
John Patrick Flannery, I think is his name. Uh, okay, he was I'll look it up. That's oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, so okay, okay. He played two roles. He played the role of, of a prisoner, but then he also played a role of a demon called Nefarious. And so in the dialogue between Nefarious, the, the attorney, or, or not that the attorney, the psychologist was asking how, if you're a demon, how did you come to possess Edward Wayne Brady? How did you come to possess? And he said it was through a series of tests. It may begin with just a, a, a stealing of a toy. It may begin, but eventually they increase in intensity. And if you get enough yeses, then eventually you can you can subjugate. And then it, he made a statement that rocked me. And I hear and, and, and I think about it now is is he said fully subjugated. Fully Edward Wayne Brady was portrayed as being fully subjugated, meaning completely overwhelmed with demons, completely possessed, completely tormented, everything like that. And this is the reason why I'm saying this is because be very careful what you say yes to. Be very careful. It's what it's what God said to to Cain, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is to have mastery over you, but you mm -hmm. must overcome it. And so what, I mean, I can only imagine the, the, the history behind all of the different places that you've gone to. And I would, I would love to know, you know, you mentioned about onset and the, the witchcraft and the, the Satanist. I don't even know if the church is still there. Um, I know Emmanuel is there. It goes by a different name now, but I don't know if the Satanist church is still there. But it's interesting how you and I both have sort of a similar starting point. You know, mm -hmm. we both have a similar starting point in this realm between good and evil. And now look at where we are today. You know, I'm not going to date us as far as our age, but <laughs> prime um, age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, we are in our prime. Recently, uh, recently, the pastor of my church, his wife told him they said that he was in his prime. So, you know what? I'm going to adopt it. Sorry. Uh, you know, here we are in our we're in our prime right now. Uh, so, you know, we're just we're just getting started. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. So it's I, I love what you do because it's you're shining a light on something that I think a lot of people can be deceived by. And I love where God is taking you with the prayer requests. And, you know, you mentioned leaving the 99 if only one. And so I love that. So I would encourage anybody, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with me, you know, my page, I would encourage you check out Phil's page. You know what? See exactly what he does. He's on Instagram. Uh, he recently, uh, is going to be doing something with YouTube. So I want you to, you know, just, just check it out. Watch some of the videos. I've watched some of the videos. I think my, the, the word Habakkuk, I think it's Habakkuk. Huck, it's huck a, yeah. Huck a that's what it is. I could, I it's it's a it. tough one. It's a yeah, tough one. Yeah, like that's <laughs> like, I think that's the one that I've seen over and over and over or the, the, the Bridgewater triangle, I think is another yeah. one that I think you did yeah. the Bridgewater triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, all of these different things, which is, but here's the other thing though. Like, have you, have you gone to Salem at all? Because I think of the Salem witch trials and I think of all that stuff. Like New England has a spiritual heritage. Like it's where the oh, pilgrims, yeah. the Puritans. So it has a history and a heritage and righteousness, but we also know it has a heritage of darkness. So have you gone to Salem at all? Salem? Not yet, uh, okay. but it is on my list. It is on my list. Cause yeah, okay. I can. I can only imagine there's there's got to be some evil stuff going on up there, no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the, the, that whole thing is just a very strange. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's hard to separate like what reality from you know, because after a certain point, it gets to be hearsay. You know, I mean, people are just pointing fingers at everybody. You know. Yeah. After a certain point, so then you, you're like, Did, what really happened here? You know, yeah. was there really witchcraft, or was it just you know something else? You know, so. I'd be interested to find out. Um, yeah, because so that's on my list. So I will be definitely checking that out. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, as we sort of let, wrap this up and bring it to a close, and I, before we, I do that, I just want I want to thank anybody that's joined in and anybody that's watched this. So Phil and I both thank you for tuning in, and we thank you even if you watch it after the live stream. We want to thank you for your support. Uh, so I'm sure I can speak for Phil when I say when I say thank you for that. But Phil, one question that I want to ask you, and you know, it's sort of just an invitation to anyone. So, what, given your experience with, we'll just say the paranormal and everything like that, if you could give any piece of advice 
to anybody that's either maybe skeptical or or anything like that or and, and tying it into the spiritual you know good and evil and everything like that like what would you say to anybody that you know either maybe skeptical maybe on the fence you know what what would you say from a christian perspective mm -hmm. um i guess i would say uh well if it's like a non-believer non like a skeptical non-believer like not christian person i would i would probably say you know give my videos a watch um after a certain point i i think there'll be no doubt that um there's something going on that you can't explain at the very least. Now, if you're a Christian person who's more skeptical, um, I would just say, um, you know, give it a, give it a shot. Uh, give it a chance. Yeah. Um, obviously it's not for everybody, you know, no content is for everybody, you know? So I'm, I'm not going to say that my content is for everybody because it's not for everybody. Everyone has different tastes, but you know, um, I try to be as honest as possible. I'm not a sensationalizer. So when you watch my videos, whatever happens actually happened and and you know i just go out there i go into a location i use technology to record um you know audio video and other instruments to uh try to uh, find evidence of the afterlife and obviously not the uh, not only the afterlife but uh spiritual things good evil um and not and not only just evil things but uh good things as well um yeah. for a while i don't know if you saw this video or not but for a while, um, I was praying and praying and praying for like, God, please like show up in my videos. If this is like, you know, uh, the right path for me, like, you know, please yeah. show me, like show up for me somewhere, somehow, some way show up. Um, and so before this moment, I kept on getting a lot of responses that were saying things like help or please pray for me was one of them or pray for me, please yeah. pray, stuff like that. And so um, I'm in the Huckamuck, which is a place I go to all the time. And so this one particular day, I just felt really great. You know, I just remember just looking around and being like, man, I just feel awesome. And yeah. this is kind of what, kind of like what you're saying with the thinning kind of goes into there. Cause this possibly, this one particular area could be a, a place where it's thin, but on the good side. Right. So I'm um, basically what I'm going to tell you is an angel encounter I had. Now I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything in the moment. I didn't hear anything in the moment. I just felt great. And I was walking down this pathway. I kind of looking around. I stopped for a moment. I'm looking at the swamp. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. And then I keep on walking. I yeah. get home. I'm, I'm going over the footage. I'm looking at stuff. I get to this moment. And as I get to this moment, I hear on the audio, like I said, there's nothing on the screen. You're just seeing a pathway and, and grass and trees. And, you know, you don't see anything. You just, it's all audio on this. So I start hearing uh, what sounds like singing. Uh, yep. Holy, 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 which is exactly what angels do when they uh, are like singing to God. You know what I mean? Right. They, they say, right. holy, holy, holy. And then surely right after that, there's a voice that comes through and it says peace. And when it says peace, it sounds like it's in a huge amphitheater, like magnified. Like it's it's quiet, but it's it has an echo to it, like a huge echo. Like as if, yeah. you know, say if it was in a huge... Uh, place in you know a place where it would echo you could really it, a huge echo so you yeah. hear the word peace um all of a sudden you then you can hear like what sounds like music and harps playing that kind of a thing yeah. and then all of a sudden the that all that stuff kind of fades out the wind kind of picks up and then it kind of it just fades away completely and that that was it that was the moment um right there so i accounted at that as like either like you said some sort of a thinning spot where i was capturing a glimpse of heaven or an angel was there. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but definitely something for sure. And it seemed like it was a a, a, a good thing and not like a bad thing. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Because when evil's around, like a spiritual attack or something, you know, like you said, you know that feeling. And, you know, when, you know, you're having a moment at the altar or you're singing, uh, worshiping or something, you know, those like, you know, you feel God's presence or something or you feel good or, you know what I mean? You generally feel better or really great, you know what I mean? In those kind of moments. Yeah. But um, so it was just a weird kind of cool moment, um, especially like I took it as a, a good thing, not like a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just a cool moment. Like I couldn't ask for like a cooler like moment. So uh, uh, please, everyone check that out if you want to uh, take a uh, listen to that. Because I'd love to get you guys thoughts on what you guys think. Because um, yeah. it's definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. I don't know if anybody watches this, but... Uh... 
I'm a big fan of Jason Upton. So Jason Upton yes, did a song. Yes. Jason Upton, and you probably know where I'm going with this reference. Yes, yes, yes. So Jason yep. Upton does a song called Fly. And so it's interesting because he's, you just hear Jason Upton singing like you normally would. And I've seen Jason Upton live. So uh, you hear Jason Upton singing. And then as you listen to it, all of a sudden, the whole audio, the whole sound changes. You hear this unbelievable harmony and a range that just i just blows me away and then you just hear this so i would encourage you go on spotify go on prime music go on apple music go wherever you want to listen to it and look up jason Upton's song fly because it goes along with what phil's saying because it's almost and, and isaiah saldivar if any of you are familiar with isaiah saldivar he did a video about it it's been on TikTok. it's been on instagram and you listen to it and you can hear it like it's undeniable it's mm -hmm. you just there's no way you can listen to it and be like that's not because they went back and played it it was captured solely on audio uh and i think if i remember correctly someone said that they saw an angel standing behind jason uh, if i read the, remembering the reports correctly about they like they saw an angel actually standing there with jason upton um wow. And so, and then you hear it in the audio. So, what does yeah. the I mean, what does the Bible say? We entertain straight, we entertain angels unaware, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely possible for this. So, yeah. So, the this battle between good and evil, this battle between light and darkness, this battle. I'm just going to say between thin places and strongholds. Like, I think is something that we have to recognize and understand, uh, and. You know, just this need to to arm ourselves with the truth, right? I love that Phil's approaching this from a Christian perspective rather than just from something that you would see on, you know, Discovery Plus or something like that. Maybe you'll be on Discovery Plus one day. Who knows? Maybe you'll be on Pure Flix. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't think you'll be on Pure Flix. <laughs> but, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. You know, all of a sudden we'll see you on Pure Flix. You know, it's boring with Phil on Pure Flix. So, you know, it's... It, but it, I like it that you're doing it from a Christian perspective because I think it can be skewed and I think it can be misunderstood. So, um, yeah. So, Phil, I don't know if there's anything else as we bring this video to a close. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to share, any other type of encouragement or, um, or anything. Yeah, I just I would just say thank you for having me on. I thought this was an awesome discussion, an awesome time. I mean, I could get together with you and hang out, you know, yeah. and just, you know talk like this not not on air just hang out but um yeah uh but yeah it's been it's been far too long so thank you for having me on this is an awesome discussion we'll have to maybe even do another one on some other maybe specific topics um if yeah. you want like as far as like uh you know even maybe even get into some nephilim stuff if you want um yep because that that whole thing they could we could do a million episodes on that yeah, so good. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so I, I i find all that stuff super interesting i like oh, all I that stuff too. yep yeah so yeah. um so yeah just thank you uh, and uh if anyone doesn't want prayer out there um feel free to reach out i will pray for you just let me know what you uh want prayer for and i'll pray for you guys for sure and please pray for me and steven and thanks steven because this has been awesome so discover your yeah. voice yeah and you know if any of you do need prayer feel free to reach out i mean you've got both of us that are willing to pray for you so you can reach out reach out to us both my it's a, my uh private messenger is open so you can send me a message and i'll pray for you you can feel free to you know even write unspoken in the comments and we'll we'll you know we'll see it and we'll we'll see your name and we'll pray for you but yeah definitely let us know your prayer request definitely let us know your thoughts and you know at the end of the day let's make sure that we live our lives for the lord and make sure that everything that we do is for him and for his glory and for his honor. So yeah, Phil, we'll definitely have to do another discussion. I've Nephilim, I've done a lot of research on Nephilim. Uh, I've done a lot of research on that. Zanzumib and all of those different names that you find in the book of Deuteronomy and Numbers yeah. and all of So I get it, I get it. So we'll have to definitely do this again. Uh, sooner rather than later because i think a lot i think a lot of people are misinformed and i think a lot of people are are undereducated and they just don't know and this can be basically if there's one piece of advice i can give you to watching this video phil mentioned some of these you know nephilim races there's one piece of advice that i could leave you with right it's simply this it's it's four words read actually five read your bible for yourself like read the word like the only way to safeguard yourself against deception is to know the truth 
So read the Bible, like what Phil has mentioned with some of this stuff about the Nephilim, like it's all in the Bible. It's there. Og, King of Bashan, all of this stuff like is there. With Sihon, all of these different kings, Goliath, Goliath had, Goliath had brothers, all of these. It's there in the Bible, the days of Noah. And one final thing I will leave you with. Jesus described the last days, right? He described it as it was during the days of Noah and as it was during the days of Lot. So you think of Bill talking, mentioning Nephilim, you know what Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed for. What Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for is a big part of our culture and society today. And I'm being sort of politically correct with what I say here. But what you see with Sodom and Gomorrah, you see in our culture and in our society right now. And so we are living in the days of Noah. We are living in the days of Lot. So as so, be be mindful. Read the Bible for yourself. Read I uh, read read Second Peter two. Read Jude. Read all of these different passages and arm yourself, right? Because the only way that you can overcome deceit and falsehood is to arm yourself with the truth. So. Yeah, read your read, read your Bible for yourself. Uh, get you know get get in the Word uh, and arm yourself with the truth. And stay tuned. Bill and I are going to be doing you know more videos uh, like this. We're going to be approaching different topics. So I love that God sort of linked us up. We have similar stories. You've heard it. If you've lasted this long, congrats. Kudos to you. An hour and twenty one minutes. So congrats. You you you're you're a rock star. Even if you did last the whole time. <laughs> but like God, God bringing us having similar stories with our dads, with the church, with all of these different things. So stay tuned, right? The, I, we're gonna we're gonna be doing some more videos. They're gonna be uh, they're gonna be more intense and subjects that just aren't being talked about. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. All right, awesome. well, brother, you you have a great night, and and we'll link up again soon. Sounds good, man. Nice talking to you. You as well. See you, everybody. See you later, guys.